Uh, our intention is to do it uh, not really informal, but as uh, as informal as it should be, because we're going to like to discuss a lot of issues. So I'll do a, a brief presentation. This is our faculty. I am André Pedrinelli from Brazil. We have Dr. Pedro Pessoa from Portugal. We have Dr. Lugos Razira from uh, Czech Republic. Also, Dr. Mauricio Fadel from Brazil. So we have a very widespread uh, uh, range of panelists. So this is very important because we have worldwide experience. So uh, this is our disclosure. So all of us, the panelists, were invited for NMT to, to bring their knowledge here. And uh, we have here a brief uh, introduction on what we're going to discuss. I'll give an overview of the product. Then we have Dr. Pessoa, we're going to talk about uh, ANCO. Dr. Razira will talk about the, how to use the ultrasound. And Dr. Fadel will talk us about epicondylitis and his experience. Then afterwards, we're going to some practical demonstration here with the use of the ultrasound so we can lively see how does it operates. Then we will also get questions and answers and uh, some remarks. So, okay. So, the goals, what would be our goals today? We're going to go from theory to practical issues. We're going to understand the principles of use of this kind of injection. We're going to see acute cases and chronic cases. And uh, we're going to understand how to do it safely, which is much very important for our patients. Then we'll have questions. And that there's no reason for crying, OK? It will be knowledgeable for everybody. And we're not trying uh, to bring uh, such new, new, new things, because as doctors, injections is part of day, day by day a workshop. So, uh, Estava is well distributed around the world. You can see here we may have some different denominations, but the same product. So, we have a worldwide experience. And first of all, this kind of product as a hyaluronic acid is not a doping. So, as we are in a sports medicine conference, it's not able to say that. Uh, this is no doping at all, even the procedure. Besides, we have the no needle policy by WADA. That's uh, what everything, every time we use something injected, we should communicate to the WADA. This is no concern about doping control. So I would like to do an overview just for you, for us to standardize our knowledge about the sex. So what is uh, uh, really important? We have some uh, structures about the tendon. So the tendon's majority consisted of water plus a few cells embedded in what we call the matrix. Matrix is the key point nowadays for understanding the structure of collagen tissue. So tendons, uh, cartilage, and ligaments, and synovo also behaves almost like the same. And this is very important because we have the range of uh, elongation of the tissues. They're almost the same. Every uh, collagen tissue uh, works much better. We just have 4% of elongation. So in between 4% and 8%, we have uh, a physiological effect. After 8%, we start having ruptures. That's where the quality of the matrix is so important because if you have a good matrix, well, we can sustain uh, at least 8% of elongation. This is the, the main point. So uh, the glycosamine and glycum is a, pro a polymeric issue. And uh, the thing is that the most important is that it's charging negatively. All the inflammatory process is charged uh, positively. So we have the piezoelectric effect that we should understand quite commonly because this is can diminish the inflammatory process, which might be important because the way we can we have the production of this tablet. This is a, just a brief history of how the hyaluronic acid was found. So it was discovered in 1934 
And the first very articulate use of what we're going to talk about was in 2000. So very new uh, approach of using hyaluronic acid. So the main thing that the hyaluronic acid is a molecular, it, and the weight of the molecular is very important because we're going to have a two different aspects of use, interarticular and extraarticular. We're addressing here the extraarticular use of the hyaluronic acid. So the weight is very important. So we're going to go through a heavy chains of uh, hyaluronic acid. It, um, normally uh, it's used like a lubricant, but as it acts to change the way of the matrix behavior, this can support uh, uh, loads. This is very important for tendons and also for extra articular structures. Because, you know, when we walk, we discharge two times our body weight. And if we run, this can be in between four and eight times our body weight of discharge. So having uh, healthy tendons, healthy articular structures is very important to sustain load, even for just walking. Okay, so this is the areas of the body that we have the hyaluronic acid. So you can see, maybe we can tell that's everywhere in the, our body because it's a component of the matrix. So uh, the behavior of uh, the product is almost like this. We can have uh, the blockage of the prostaglandins when we have a tissue lesion. So this is in case the possibility of uh, uh, diminishing the inflammatory uh, process. So, and now, uh, the effect is regulating the inflammatory, as I told you before, is to improving the sliding. What I mean sliding is because each tendon has a different architecture. So as for instance, the Achilles tendon is an alenchoidal arrangement, and the patellar ligament is a straight line forward. So this is means what? Difference of behavior of each tendon. So each tendon has to be addressed uh, in this physiological way. So, and also, we have an anti-allergic uh, action. This is very important to, to address. Okay. So as I told you before, we have two main uses of yellow red gas, interarticular and extraarticular. And we will address the extraarticular one. So uh, we do have a lot of different products. And the main difference are the molecular weight, the different sources of the raw material. Mostly we have uh, the rooster crest and uh, the use of uh, molecular filtration. We have different concentrations and we have different regimens, one to five injections. This means a very financial and healthy important issue because if you inject five times, one time each week, you may have the possibility of the haste of the appearance of infection. So this is one thing. And also you're gonna have five times the doctor, five ampoules and five other things. If you do it once, it's much more financial feasible, but you have the, the type of, of concentration. So this is a thing you're going to have to understand. So how it's produced? We have two different types. We have the roaster press and we have the fermentation which uses bacteria in the system. So <clears throat> what's the difference? We use the streptococcus equi and we use a filtration because uh, the whole thing is about death cells. So on, on the process of production, you produce death cells. So, and with the filtration, you separate this from the main component. So that's why it's, we have the purity of the product. So, and we can enhance his uh, process of action. So this is just an overview. Please don't pay attention to this. And what I'd like to do is address that since 2002, we have been uh, published articles in the literature about the way we use the hyaluronic acid. So we have 
2000, 2002, we have on 2002, 2007, Petrella is a person who produces a lot of literature about this. And we have also uh, different outcomes with reduction of pain. Remember one of the slides that I showed before that one of the actions of the drug was to uh, restrain the inflammatory process and also restraining the presence of uh, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, issues that lead to pain. So, and uh, from the point of view of the lateral epicondylitis, we have this nice work from 2010, which shows improvement in assessment global of the elbow. So, we have a release of pain, we have diminution of inflammatory process, and we have a better uh, development or range of motion in the articulation. So, and also in the Lancet in 2010, we had the first uh, randomized uh, study with trial showing it has a, a good effect. And also, in, uh, let me see here, uh, 2013, the same thing, the reduction overall of pain. This is the main source of good results of the product. This is a very important issue to address. And also, uh, one of the last papers, uh, again addressing pain, walking pain, rest pain, and also return to work. All the issues reduced by the use of the hyaluronic as uh, extra articular. And one of the last papers we had produced in 2016 uh, showed no different, uh, uh, difference in postural stability and double access between uh, the but uh, the, the <coughs> results were significantly higher for injured leg when compared to the leg that we use this tablet. So this is just for giving a brief introduction. Thank you very much. And I would like to invite our next speaker, Dr. Pedro Pessoa. Please, the floor is yours. I'm a, I treat uh, professional football players and elite athletes for uh, more than 20 years. So, you know what's the, the, the first question that they ask me? When, when I can come back to play again? And the second one is I'm going to be 100%. And this question is going to be repeated for the, the coach, for the president of the club, for the manager, and for even from sometimes from the coach for national team that wants to know if he can play in the next championship. And what's the difference between uh, athlete football players and the other ones? That's, that's injury costs money and the year costs more money. And as, as you see, for a minute, for a second, that's, it's a, a huge And as you know, and as you see here, there are these two ankle sprains in, in, the, in the same season. It's very, very important. The anatomy of, of the ankle, it's easy. We have three main uh, ligaments, the anterior talofibular ligament, the calcaneofibular ligament, and the posterior talofibular ligament. The anterior talofibular ligament is only a jury in two thirds of the cases. 20% is associated with calcanofibular ligament, and calcanofibular ligament is a rare region, uh, lesion isolated. We have a the mechanism of lesion is like this. This is Jefferson in my club, and you, you see he put the foot in inversion and after addition. So when the, the, the the foot is in plantar flexion, you do a supination. So the, the anterior tibial fibular ligament is on tension and it's the first one to, to have the injury, to have the rupture. So numbers, it's a lot of, of, of injuries. 
one in 10,000 for day, and 50% of them are uh, sport related. And uh, uh, the strain, uh, usually you say to a patient, ah, it's a sprain, it's not a problem. But 40% of all sports lesions are sprains, ankle sprains. And 25, 29% of the football injuries also ankle sprains. 12% of the time away from play responsible is ankle sprains. And one third of the cost of sports injuries are due to ankle sprains. So it's a lot of money, it's a lot of costs. Also, we know that uh, more than 50% of the sprains, of ankle sprains, are occurs from direct contact. That leads with, with a previous uh, sprain have higher risk, is double. And 12 weeks after, only 60 of to 90% of the athletes are in good shape. So, we know also that is, uh, there are more lesions in competition than during the training. And for orientation, you can say to the coach or to the player, if you have an initial sprain, you can say, okay, you are going to be three games out. And if it's a recurrence, you say at least four games out. So most of them resolve with conservative treatment. Less than 20% require surgical treatment. And 20 to 40% of untreated lesions can lead to chronic symptoms. This is, this is the paper for 2006, International Ankle Consortium. It's a statement consensus that say, okay, I recurrence rate after the first uh, ankle injury, uh, but we can have a potential chronic anterior instability, and the chronic anterior instability is uh, a lot of times associated with premature osteoarthritis. Physiopathology, what, what do you know? We know that we have some intrinsic factors like strain, range of motion, balance, and proprioception. And if you have a patient that is, is coming from a lesion or if you don't have uh, isocinetic test well, and if you have some limitation in, in uh, arts of movement, yes, you can have more uh, trait to, to have another uh, uh, ankle sprain. Of course, the proprioception here is very, very, very important. If you have already uh, ankle sprain, you know that there are higher risk. A parallax uh, type is uh, they have more uh, ankle sprains and also more knee sprains. And the mild alignment, or like uh, varus, carvus, valves, it, yes, it could be uh, another factor. Sports related, yes, we have we know that uh, basket and volleyball they have more sprains, ankle sprains. If you have more athletes, more uh, contact lesions, more uh, uh, ankle sprains. Training, we have already saw that this competition is worse. F floor surface, you know, that's the only thing that we know sure is that synthetic is bad for the ankle. And the field position, if you have more contact, if it's a defensor or striker, we can have more ankle sprains. Physical examination. The, the gold standard should be at four or five days after the deletion to, to evaluate and we can have a good uh, classification, classification. We can see this slow and full fit and, and with the uh, uh, bruise, localized bruise sometimes. And the classification, we can have three grades. The, the first grade we have a middle stretching without microscopic rupture, so no instability. It's the usual one, is the majority of the ones. In, in grade two, we can have a partial rupture with moderate pain and swelling, and we can have a slight moderate instability and complete rupture with marked pain and swelling and hematoma. You see, in the first place is a grade two, and in the second one is a guy that is going to be operated in the uh, grade three. We know that also that there are three phases. In, in initially, we have inflammatory phase in 10 days after proliferation phase until three months and, and finally maturation phase. In, in, in the beginning, we should avoid injury uh, aggravation and use price and I put a, a cast or a removal boot. After we, it's important to avoid inversion, so it's better to put a functional like this one. And in the final, sometimes we feel that the, the patient is okay, the athlete gives us 
feedback. I'm okay, doctor. After six weeks, you you can do. Now it's important to maintain the, the functional uh, in the trainings, in the in the games, in the competition. Otherwise, we can see that uh, after 12 months, you can only have 80 percent of uh, of tensile strength. Now we start with our, our gold, the treatment. Usually we do initial treatment 10 days of immobilization, price, lace up race of functional immobilization, anti inflammatory drugs, and rehabilitation. Physiotherapy and proprioceptive training is very important. So, but we are, we are in, in the football players, you know, and we need everything. And when we have a lesion, a sprain like this, they, they look everything. This lady do injections of uh, uh, placenta, horse placenta to treat uh, muscular lesions, and they go there. They want magic. They want miracles. You know that there are no miracles, but they they want it. So when when the Diego have to bring me the, this product, hyaluronic acid, we I have some experience with interticular uh, use. We have already uh, shown that we, we can have better healing quality, we can have degrees of formation scar tissue, we can also reduce uh, adhesions and we can have a promotion of co correct uh, alignment of the collagen. So it can work in, in the two phases, in, in phase one and two. It can also decrease the pain, it, it can accelerate the decrease of the pain, and seems to me good. And but does it work, or it might work? This is my question. There are clinic evidence, of course, and uh, we have already saw the, these papers uh, for Jacobs and uh, Petrella, and, uh, and uh, we see that you can reduce the time, you can reduce the pain. We don't have serious effects. So. I try in, in 10, 12 of my patients, and uh, 10 males and 2 females, one hand ball, one runner, 2 basketballs, and of course 8 football players. And the age is between 19 and 32 years. The, the, the pain, the initial score was 6. The treatment was uh, rice and uh, the, the athletes received an injection of sport visc in uh, the first 48 hours. And uh, the assessment had been done at four days. Uh, the, the average reduction of pain in both in rest and walking uh, for 3.7. All the athletes, uh, the athletes were satisfied with, with the treatment, and also we don't have any adverse effects. So when I now I'm a, have a, a sprain, ankle sprain in a, a patient of mine, like like a flat tire in Formula One, and then. These guys are Formula One. We can put him in the box, sports visc, <laughs> and put him back to business in, in the, the same level. Thank you very much. So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I try to demonstrate to you another possibility is how to use sport visc tabha because uh, in the real beginning, uh, the on-label uh, yeah, diagnosis uh, was the ankle distortion uh, grade one and two, and we tried to find uh, spreading the diagnosis out-label, but uh, um, okay um, in the medicine, medical part without any uh, problems and side effects. So uh, we uh, try to find the neg possible negative side effects to be like artists uh, in our treatment. Uh, so we used uh, the um, Stabha in different regions and uh, we uh, can demonstrate to our results. Certainly we uh, try to put Stabha exactly to the place where we will. That uh, means we use the uh, ultrasound navigation uh, with uh, a special uh, possibility of new ultrasound machines that uh, need a visual visualization. Uh, it's uh, called different in uh, different machines and companies. For example, in uh, Canon, it's Super Needle. Uh, in Samsung, it's Needle Mate, Alpine, and Needle Vision, and and and. But uh, what's important, the needle is very precisely to visualize to put it in direct uh, problematic place. 
So you can see here the needle application in the uh, rotator cuff there. Uh, that's uh, on your left hand side, on the right hand side. You can see the healing after injection uh, of uh, Stabha um, directly uh, to the defect to, into the lesion. We can use Stabha also for destroying calcifications of this so-called needling. With the needle, we can applicate uh, the Stabha directly into the uh, uh, calcification uh, which we destroyed by uh, the uh, recover, uh, recurrent uh, needle putting directly into the calcificated point. Another uh, problem is to use Stabha by acute muscle injuries. Uh, we can put Stabha directly into the muscle lesion just after the injury. If possible, we try to evacuate the blood and then we apply uh, the Stabha. But if we are not uh, satisfied uh, with the uh, evacuation of the blood, we can put Stabha directly into the hematoma without any risk of negative uh, side effects. So um, again, on your uh, right hand side, you can see uh, the patient uh, after the Stabha treatment uh, after a quite big uh, injury of uh, the hamstring muscles. Uh, certainly, we can uh, use uh, Stabha into uh, the, any uh, fluid, uh, um, uh, fluid uh, um, for example, it's some uh, encapsulated hematoma or seromas or um, bursites. Uh, it can be a small one or big one because uh, with Stabha we can find again the optimal place where to put uh, the uh, injection directly into the fluid. If we have, uh, for example, post resectional big fluid uh, um, mass, so in this moment we can use Stabha together with steroids, for example, the pomedrol or solmedrol trispan and and and. It's uh, without a complication. So uh, I discussed it uh, in the really beginning also with Professor Petrova, and he had no problem with application Stabha together with uh, steroids. So uh, certainly uh, we can have also acute uh, situations. Uh, for example, this is a decolman injury. That means uh, tearing uh, the skin um, from the uh, tissue. So we can put Stabha directly into the fluid. Huh? Well, slowly. Directly into the fluid bet between the uh, scar layer and uh, the fascia layer. So the healing is very quick. Uh, in a few days, uh, there are no problems after these injuries. Uh, uh, this is uh, so-called deep intrapatellar, infrapatellar bursa. It's butterfly shape in the short axis. Uh, this is uh, the patellar patella tendon. This is the fluid in the bursa. It's longitudinal view and fluid be below uh, this patellar tendon. We can put uh, again the stabha directly into the bursa and the healing uh, is uh, going very fast due to the thixotropic effect that stabha can uh, absorb uh, the fluid uh, and uh, the bursa is healing very quickly. We can use it also in acute injuries uh, on your left hand side. You can uh, see acute post-traumatic uh, uh, Prepatellar bursitis, uh, we can uh, again use the Stabha and put it directly into the bursa. On your right hand side, you can uh, see so called pre uh, Achillei bursae. In this moment, we put the needle in the anterior part of the bursa and the Stabha goes down from uh, for the uh, uh, all region uh, of the pre Achilles bursitis. You can see that uh, the Achilles is uh, divided from uh, the calcaneus. So we can put it very precisely. Uh, very uh, strange uh, application, uh, but uh, with very good results. Uh, it's uh, irritation uh, of uh, symphysis. It's very often in football after blockage of sacroiliac joint or after direct injuries. In that moment, we can put Stabha directly between the pubic uh, bones. This, uh, again, is very good uh, effects. 
antipathies. Uh, that's uh, another problem. We will have a special lecture about it. Uh, but uh, antipathies are very often uh, together with overuse and uh, wrong stereotypes of sport activities. In this moment, uh, we have seen quite a lot of recidivism uh, due to uh, non-compliant patients uh, without uh, possibility uh, to uh, protect uh, this uh, uh, region. Uh, patellar tendinitis uh, is uh, uh, in two uh, different situations. In sports medicine, uh, we uh, can see uh, the uh, pat uh, jumper's knee, it's tendinitis of the apex tendon. But when we have uh, classic tendinitis, uh, we use tamha and put it uh, uh, in the border, uh, tendon, uh, uh, soft tissue in surroundings. If uh, we have uh, pathological neovascularization of the apex, we can uh, put uh, uh, stabha directly to the bridging veins. Very similar situation is when we have tendinitis, for example, Achilles tendinitis with uh, new pathological neovascularization, which uh, is uh, conducting uh, the in, uh, inflammation. In this moment, uh, we put stabha uh, below uh, the uh, Achilles, that's the position of the needle, and with the movement of the needle, we cut uh, the bridging uh, veins, and we destroy the communication between soft tissues in uh, surrounding, and Stabha makes a layer which uh, can uh, help us uh, to heal the tendon and to protect for uh, recovery of uh, the bridging uh, veins as uh, a neovascularization. Uh, certainly, if we have partial rupture of Achilles tendon, do not hesitate to put Stabha directly into the lesion. So in the first moment, I, uh, when I saw the first patient, uh, for me it, it was a shock between, uh, because uh, the fluid of Stabha uh, makes a big depot in the Achilles, but uh, two days later I cannot see anything uh, in the Achilles. And I, I have really no complication and all my patients were here. This is a panoramic view of some complete uh, rupture of Achilles. Certainly, normally, uh, it's uh, indication for uh, surgical treatment, but uh, some patients are not willing to go to surgery. So in this moment, uh, I try to uh, use Stabha together with a plaster of Paris bandage uh, for six weeks, and the Achilles was healed completely without any residual problems. Uh, so, uh, I will um, mention in the end um, uh, the ankle uh, because in the beginning it was uh, indicated only for ankle distortion grade uh, 1 and 2 as we have heard in the first uh, lecture, but uh, we try to use it uh, only uh, also in the grade uh, 3. Uh, we use ultrasound uh, forced position in local anesthesia for uh, distinguishing the grade 3, so we, have, uh, we can exactly uh, find on ultrasound the instability, and we put Stabha uh, according to Petrola fan shaping uh, to uh, the ankle, and we have very good uh, results uh, with uh, this application also in this grade 3. But what's necessary to know that sometimes is by ankle distortion also uh, irritated uh, the syndesmosis <coughs> tibio fibular, so uh, we, it's uh, uh, also lesion of tibio fibular and anterior ligament. So in this moment we can see directly on ultrasound and we put stabha also directly to syndesmosis. So if we have a uh, uh, grade 3 distortion with irritation syndesmosis, we use directly one injection into uh, the ankle and another one uh, to the uh, syndesmosis and then we put plaster of Paris bandage uh, for five weeks. So uh, our results, uh, we uh, used Tabha in more than 800 patients. Uh, we uh, evaluated uh, for this situation more than 400, you can see uh, that uh, we haven't uh, any bigger problem or complications. Only pain after application, we can uh, see uh, approximately in 14% of uh, patients. 
the positive effect is more than 90% uh, of, uh, from our patients. The recurrence of trouble uh, by uh, low transporting activities, we have in 15%. Uh, it was uh, mostly tendinopathies uh, in non-compliant uh, patients. This combination in steroids, uh, we uh, used uh, this application in 23%. It was first cystic uh, um, affections, uh, but uh, we try the Stabha also to use uh, in oncological patients. That's a question for future for discussion because uh, uh, certainly Stabha can uh, increase the proliferation effect, but uh, if we have uh, oncological patient with uh, huge uh, post-operative uh, seromas. So in this moment, we were very satisfied also in uh, this sphere of treatment. So in conclusion, we can say that uh, using Stabha is a very safe method uh, with minimal risk of compli uh, complications, with no damage uh, of uh, injured tissues, and uh, we can uh, recommend it uh, to uh, another applications. So, uh, if possible, I can only demonstrate to you very briefly uh, the possibilities where to apply uh, Stabha uh, on uh, ultrasound. 